Hi, in this video, I am going to show how you can measure risk of any stock using its historical price information. This video has three sections. First, I'm going to talk about how the risk of a stock is defined. Second, I'm going to show how to measure risk of any stock, mainly on systematic risk, using Microsoft Excel. We are going to take Apple Incorporation as an example. Finally, and most importantly, how to interpret this unsystematic risk numbers and its implication in equity investment. Let's define risk first. Equity market risk can be broadly classified as systematic risk and unsystematic risk. The source of systematic risk is the market or global factors, commonly known as macroeconomic factors, such as rising oil prices, currency movements, changing government policies, and changes in inflation and interest rates. Unsystematic risk, however, are owed to factors unique to company or an industry. Management and labor relations, increased competition, entry of new players, and customers' preference for a company's products are some of the factors that generate unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risks are also known as internal risk or diversifiable risk. In other words, this risk can be mitigated by adding stocks from different industries into the portfolio. Now that you know what unsystematic risk of a stock is, let's move to the second part of the video and learn how to measure this unsystematic portion of the risk. By definition, the standard deviation of the stock's return is the unsystematic risk. The standard deviation is basically the variability of stock returns over a period of time. The higher the standard deviation, the higher the variability of returns and the higher the unsystematic risk. We are going to use Apple Incorporation's last five years monthly data, September 20, 2015 to September 20, 2020. You can use different time range, but if you do so, your risk measures will be a little bit different. If you like to, get a result similar to mine, I would ask you to follow my steps from this point and on. Go to the webpage finance.yahoo.com In the code lookup box, type in the ticker symbol of Apple Incorporation, which is AAPL. Click the Historical Data tab. Define the time period as September 20, 2015 to September 20, 2020. From the drop-down menu, set the frequency as monthly. Now press Apply, press Download. Open the AAPL.CSV file in Excel. Check if you have a total of 60 months or 60 rows. Delete all the columns except the date and closing price columns. Using return formula, calculate monthly return for Apple Incorporation. Copy the formula for each and every month below.
Now calculate monthly expected return and standard deviation using the formula. Annualize expected return by multiplying the monthly return by 12. Annualize standard deviation of return by multiplying the monthly standard deviation by square root of 12. Therefore, the expected return for Apple Incorporation is 30.97% and the unsystematic risk of Apple Incorporation is 31.16%. This is how you can measure the unsystematic risk of any stock using Microsoft Excel. Finally, and most importantly, we are going to learn how to interpret this unsystematic risk measure and how to possibly use this number in our investment decision. For the interpretation, we need to have some understanding about 68, 95, 99.7 rule using normal distribution. This is also called probability density function. Specifically, one standard deviation above and below the mean encompasses approximately 68.27% data values. Two standard deviation above and below the mean encompasses approximately 95.45% data values. Similarly, three standard deviation above and below the mean encompasses approximately 99.73% data values. Recall that the unsystematic risk of Apple Incorporation was calculated as 31.16% and the expected return was calculated as 30.97%. Now, based on the past 5 years monthly price data you just used and using normal distribution chart, there is a 68.27% probability that return on Apple stock will be one standard deviation above or below its expected return or Apple return will be in the range between negative 0.19% and 62.13%. Similarly, there is a 95.45% probability that return on Apple stock will be two standard deviation above or below the expected return or Apple return will be in the range between negative 31.35% and 93.29%. Now, as for the investment implication, ask yourself, do you want 95.45% assurance of returns? Can you tolerate investment return of negative 31.35% in a bad state of the world? If you think it's too much risky for you, move on to another stock that has relatively lower return volatility. I hope this video helps you define and measure the unsystematic risk of any stock in the equity market. If you like to learn about systematic risk or beta of a stock, check this video or look for the video link in the description below.